We've got AI rumors from Apple, real AI news from Apple, and much, much more. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today, we start with some juicy rumors in one of the areas of discussion that has really been confounding for people this year, which is, of course, what the heck Apple is going to do in the generative AI space. Now, what we know for sure is that Apple has been pretty unconclusive, even amongst itself, around what it wants its approach to be. Throughout the year, we've had reports that Apple had been involved in training their own models and even experimenting with them internally, but that they just weren't sure exactly what they wanted their approach to be. Now, part of this is probably due to the fact that Apple has very different feelings about privacy as relates to other companies. They also like to run software directly on their devices rather than having to rely on the cloud. Of course, the state of the art in LLMs right now doesn't really allow for that type of approach, at least not with some very different thinking. And yet, even with all of this, it has seemed like there has been more energy recently going into figuring out what Apple's approach is going to be. Specifically, in September, we got a report from the information that Apple was now spending millions of dollars a day on training AI models. That sort of financial outlay suggests that they are moving closer towards doing something in the space. And yesterday, Mac Rumor shared an analysis from Jeff Pu, who's an analyst who covers Apple's supply chain for a Hong Kong investment firm, that generative AI on the iPhone and iPad is coming potentially in late 2024. Specifically, it sounds like there could be generative AI features as soon as iOS 18, which is, of course, the next operating system for Apple devices. From the piece, in a research note this week, Pu said his supply chain check suggests that Apple is likely to build a few hundred AI servers in 2023 and significantly more next year. He believes Apple will offer a combination of cloud-based AI and so-called edge AI, which involves more on-device data processing. Now, back in August, another supply chain analyst, Ming-Chi Kuo, said that given how behind Apple's generative AI efforts were, it seemed like that late 2022 timeframe might not be realistic and that Apple might not really be in the market with something until 2025 or beyond. Now, of course, whenever Apple does do something in the generative AI space, it's going to be a huge deal. And especially if it comes natively integrated into the iPhone, even with hundreds of millions of new users between now and then, it's likely to still represent a significant mainstreaming moment. Now, while that Apple news is all still firmly in the realm of rumor or if not rumor analysis based on things like supply chains, some other news related to Apple is a little bit more clear. Apple scored a coup when they brought Jon Stewart out of Daily Show Retirement to create a new news show, The Problem with Jon Stewart. Apparently, the show was about to start production of its third season, and that is where they ran into challenging quote-unquote creative differences. Writes The Verge, Stewart's intended discussions of artificial intelligence and China were a major concern for Apple. Though new episodes of the show were scheduled to begin shooting in just a few weeks, staffers learned today that production had been halted. Apparently what had happened is that Apple came to Jon Stewart directly and said that he and his team needed to be quote-unquote aligned with the company's views on those thorny topics of AI in China. Stewart, unfortunately for Apple, said kindly no thank you and decided to leave the show. Now, it is important to note that we don't actually know the specifics of their differences in opinion. In other words, we don't know what the planned coverage of AI or China was that Apple had a problem with. So take with a grain of salt anyone contending to have good information around that. But still, it feels likely and is the assumption of most that whereas Jon Stewart would perhaps be particularly critical of China, Apple is trying to walk a tightrope of not upsetting that country who represents a huge market for them. Hopefully we get more information about what opinions were of disagreement. But for now, discussion of AI and China with Jon Stewart are out, at least when it comes to Apple TV. Next up, let's move over into the world of hardware. IBM has just released research about a new chip that is specifically focused on AI and which suggests that there are some pretty meaningful advances here. The processor is called North Pole, and the specific innovation is to take an approach that doesn't require the chip to as frequently access external memory, aka RAM, which means that it can not only perform tasks faster, such as image recognition, but it can do so while also consuming less power. Said nanoelectrics researcher Damien Querlioz, its energy efficiency is just mind-blowing. I feel the paper will shake the common thinking in computer architecture. Basically, this chip puts memory in each of its 256 computing cores, which means less of having to shuttle data between chips. Writes Nature, the cores are wired together in a network inspired by the white matter connections between parts of the human cerebral cortex. This and other design principles, most of which existed but had never been combined in one chip, enabled North Pole to beat existing AI machines by a substantial margin in standard benchmark tests of image recognition. It also uses one-fifth of the energy of -of state-of-the-art AI chips, despite not using the most recent and most miniaturized manufacturing processes. 
Now, importantly, this is just a research stage, and North Pole doesn't currently have the ability to work for large language models. As Nature writes, the chip can only run pre-programmed neural networks that need to be trained in advance on a separate machine. So what's the utility here? Well, one piece of it is that its architecture could be used in speed-critical applications such as self-driving cars, where the ability to pre-program those functions is there. And of course, there's the possibility of continuing to evolve these new approaches to chip design. I think overall, it's a reminder that alongside the rise in demand for AI software applications, it's highly likely that we're going to see a significant amount of hardware innovation as well. Last up today, another fun one from the world of science. AI has, for the first time ever, detected a supernova all on its own. So discovering supernovas is a really difficult and labor-intensive process. Astronomers and scientists basically have to hand go through huge, huge amounts of information and manually identify potential candidates that could be supernovas. Well, now a team from Northwestern, who are in fact my alma mater, have created something called the Bright Transient Survey Bot, which does all the painful intermediary work all on its own. Gizmodo writes, researchers fed the BTS bot machine learning algorithm 1.4 million images from 16,000 astronomical sources. Those images included past evidence of supernovae, glaring galaxies, and temporarily flaring stars. Equipped with that training set, the AI model was able to identify a new supernova candidate and automatically requested spectrum reading from a robotic telescope at the Palomar Observatory in California. The system eventually identified the supernova candidate as a stellar explosion in which a white dwarf star fully exploded, and it automatically shared its finding with the astronomical community. In other words, the AI system identified and shared the new discovery all on its own. Great news to the humans involved. Now, this team at Northwestern says that in the last few years, researchers have spent 2,200 hours doing the work that now might be able to be done by BTS bot and other technology like it, which obviously frees them up for much more advanced research and digging deeper into other astronomical mysteries. Many folks, including notably Sam Altman, think that one of the most profound impacts of artificial intelligence is likely to be the way that it increases the rate and speed of scientific discovery, and this is certainly further evidence of how that might work. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.